Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard and here we're going to get a little bit geeky by looking at some battery degradation data. Over recent weeks I've been gathering up information from battery health tests on electric vehicles and I've recorded 300 now so I'm starting to get some quite good comparative data. For example, I can look at the average battery degradation across a number of different EV brands and manufacturers. We can compare different EV brands and manufacturers, which ones degrade more or less. And we can also look at the difference between a Tesla Model 3 LFP battery and non-LFP, how they might be good for longevity and high mileage, how much capacity remains, how much they degrade. So uh, we've been learning more and more about battery degradation for a number of years now. Uh, but this is now data that I've been gathering, which are typically ex-lease cars. I want to get as high mileage as possible. So these are typically ex-lease cars, three or four years old. And I've started with the highest mileage I can. Uh, but basically coming down to 30,000 miles and upwards. And this is a score and health test based on a test by Avalu. There's a number of companies out there, and there are a number of different testing methods. I mean, for example, a Tesla it might be Avalu, uh, it might be Altelium, it might be from the car itself, or you might use Scan My Tesla. There's lots of different methods and ways, but I think the idea here is that this is all from the Avalu flash test results, so the same. However, what I will point out, there's going to be a few ifs and buts in this, is that uh, different cars, when they report the state of health, we report it, it's what the car's telling the device, you know, the scan is telling it. So some cars will include buffers, some won't, and that can distort the comparative figures. But nonetheless, we have some comparative figures. It's a bit of a work in progress. This will be ongoing for a while. I can keep adding to this. But I think there's enough data now to start sharing some of this information out uh, as, as we have it. So here we are, kind of part one of our battery degradation uh, spreadsheet and some graphs to follow. The, again, I've just been sort of fumbling together. I'm sure it could be flashier and swisher and maybe we'll do some more on future episodes, but enough to get some ideas and we can look at generally how much batteries degrade. It's still a question that people ask us often is, you know, how's the state of health in the battery? Um, you know, how much do they degrade? How long do these last? And we know that generally they're actually very good. Batteries are, are super reliable, last for ages, hundreds of thousands of miles. And yes, they do degrade in terms of some uh, capacity loss. So you can't go quite as far as a car that's done 100,000 miles as you could when it knew, but it'll still be just as efficient typically. It'll still be just as fast. It just has less capacity. Imagine your electric toothbrush, electric drill. It was brand new. It could run for three hours. Now it can only run for two hours, 45 minutes. It's much the same with electric cars, but by how much? Well, here we can show you now. So let me get our screen recording on this laptop here. And I'm going to record the screen here. So 300 uh, cars now gathered. And what I can show you first here is, excuse that little pop up at the top. This is across all manufacturers. This is the results from 300 cars tested. What the average uh, state of health is of that car. Now there's actually a score from Avalu and the state of health from Avalu. They're pretty much the same numbers typically, maybe one or 2% apart. The state of health is really kind of the capacity of the battery, what the car's reporting to this Avalu flash test that its state of health is. Uh, whereas the score is also using some more data that Avalu can gather like charging habits and driving habits. So um, there are some comparisons, but if you hear me talking about score and state of health, that's what the two are. And so if we look at score here, we can see that the crossover line, so 90% of capacity, this is 90% uh, score here, usually happens at about 80,000 miles. If I look at state of health, the kind of capacity, it's a bit different. So there's sort of 90% capacity compared to when it was a new or ideal 100% uh, was uh, usually about 90,000 miles here. So this is across all manufacturers, but bear in mind this data here is mainly cars that come off lease companies, three years or four years old, and it's largely Teslas, but there's quite a lot of Jaguar in there, the I-Paces, quite a lot of Mercedes in there, EQC 400s, and quite a lot of Polestar in there. And I'll show you comparisons between those in a moment. Uh, I am gathering information I can get from all cars. I'm doing over 30,000 miles. I'm always starting with the sort of highest mileage cars possible because that's the most interesting data, the high mileage uh, first. But, you know, if there's not that many cars, for example, there actually isn't that many sort of Peugeot E208s, for example. Uh, so there's, there's not really enough to make them onto graphs yet. Uh, but again, this is why this is a kind of ongoing project. But nonetheless, here we could say now that, generally speaking, uh, at the 90 to 100,000 mile mark, 
your battery is about 90%, but look, it's not an even decline. It is, this is what we've expected. You lose a bit of capacity initially in the early stages, the first 20, 30,000 miles, you could lose 5% of your capacity. But then at a, another 70,000 miles, you lose another 5%. It's not a dead straight uh, curvature for state of health and capacity that's still available. We have seen this similar sort of graph pattern before. It's not linear uh, from other data. So that's exactly what we expected, really. And if I go now to a comparison, now you bear in mind here, I've started to score on the uh, y-axis at 80% and the mileage at 30. Uh, so you get a, an idea there, because if you do it on one plot from zero, zero, you end up with like this. So this is the cars here, right at the top. All basically healthy batteries, even at 100,000 miles is, is the answer there. Uh, so let's give you some comparisons. Um, well, actually, look, let's go through uh, some individual ones first. So let's just look at Teslas here. Now, about 150 out of the 300 here are Teslas, so about 50% of this data is Tesla. It's typically Model 3 uh, long ranges, very popular as a lease car and to drive quite a high mileage and very easy to do so as well. So a lot of these are three or four year old cars with uh, in excess of 60,000 miles on the clock. Uh, so, here we can see uh, how you would expect a Tesla Model 3 long range or standard range to average out in its battery capacity. So by 100,000 miles, it's averaging out about 88% uh, of its state of health, so its original capacity available. It passes 90 at about, on well, this one, about 70, but we've seen many cars at 100,000 miles at 90, um, but nonetheless, this is the results we've got here now. We tested our own Model 3 performance 2019 at 100,000 miles, and that came out about 90%. Uh, so it's sort of in, in line with that. Um, but let's go to now Polestar. Now Polestar, I've noticed, are always reading quite high. So if we look at 100,000 miles, they're typically reporting about 92% of its capacity. Uh, I've noticed a few manufacturers reporting quite high. Um, Polestar, Mercedes, BMW, uh, and also Kia and Hyundai. But Kia and Hyundai, the report in there is not quite right. The way Avalu always picks up its result is nearly always 100%, even at very high mileage. And so I think the way the cars report its health uh, probably excludes its own buffer and therefore it always looks like it's got 100% of its uh, usable, um, whereas other manufacturers' results to the same test wouldn't. Um, so the Kia Honda is going to be a bit distorted. But look, I've noticed Polestar seems to report good state of battery health so it's consistently. So there's quite a few results coming in here. There's a couple of cars here around the 100,000 miles mark, and there's one here with nearly 115,000 miles, and that's still well over 90% state of health, which is good. Uh, Jaguar I-Pace, there's quite a few of those now starting to come through, and that's got a much lower state of um, retained state of health. So we're typically 100,000 miles, looking at about 85, 86% there. Again, get this in context, you know, okay, it does a few miles less than it was new, but just as quick, just as efficient, still great to drive. You've got to take this in a bit of context. And um, look, they're covering some mileage now, and I'm sure they've done it very nicely. So uh, they're doing okay, uh, but Jaguar, compared to some of the main runners here, and I'll do the comparative chart side by side in a moment. Uh, so I've noticed Mercedes here uh, doing well, according to this result at least. Again, more interrogation of the battery and seeing how it compares exactly would be good to know, but for this comparative result, they tend to score quite high. So got an EQC for a couple of them at nearly 90,000 miles here, and they're still scoring over 95% of their state of health. So that's good. Does it include buffers or not? To be honest, I don't know, but that's what the car's reporting to uh, Avalu. Uh, I've also got Audi here as we see more Audi e-tron 50s, e-tron 55s. And it's quite interesting this because the e-tron 55s, I mean, they charge really fast. Uh, I had one a couple of years ago, I liked it and it charged really quickly. But I remember at the time myself and other people thinking, yeah, but how does that affect long-term battery health? Well, actually, they're looking okay. Now, Porsche Taycans and Audi e-tron GTs, usually don't have amazing results, but at e-tron 50s and 55s, you do have quite good results. Uh, this chart here, there's no e-tron GTs in this, there's no Taycans in this, but this is e-tron 55s and Q4s, and um, they seem to be doing okay, actually. Uh, so even uh, 80,000 miles reporting well over 90%, so they're not too bad at all. Uh, the Kia Hyundai, well, look, there's their results. I think always fairly distortedly high, though. There's a couple of anomalies where they're a bit lower, more like 94, 95%, but usually they just kind of report 100%. Um, so I'm taking them with a bit of a pinch of salt. 
So I'll come on to LFP versus not LFP tests in a minute, but let's just do some um, comparatives here. So this is uh, some groupings, so Audi, VW, Skoda stuff for the green line, Tesla the blue line, Hyundai Q at the top, Jaguar's the orange line there at the bottom here, and then you've got Mercedes as uh, this one, and Polestar here, the two red lines, uh, or the red and sort of pinkish line. I should change the color then, really, shouldn't I? Uh, but basically, the Mercedes is the upper one, the Polestar is a slightly pinker one here. And you can see well, there's, sort of, there's a difference, but usually by a, a, a couple of uh, percent, but actually all in a very similar kind of linear pattern, it looks like maybe the Audi ones are degrading slightly quicker there. Uh, but this one here, the blue one, Tesla, well, it's only one up from the Jaguar there. You know, does is, is that mean it's just reporting its state of health differently, or is it just not um, holding its health quite as well? Well, again, this is why these battery health tests, you never really quite know. Data can be interpreted in many different ways. So I'm just sharing this data that I've gathered with you. So um, now, with Tesla, the standard range models uh, in 2021 switched to what's called an LFP battery, different battery chemistry. You can charge it to 100%. Tesla like it had to be done at least once a week. And a lot of people said that the LFP batteries would last better, last longer. But actually, I was noticing on here, looking at a lot of results, that they didn't seem to be particularly lasting better or have better state of health. Um, so I started plotting some of them. Now, there's not that many um, LFP cars out there yet um, for this result, you know, over 30,000 miles or higher mileage ones, but it's a few. So uh, this is the uh, state of health result. So what we're starting to see, in fact, this is probably a better graph here. I'll go to the Avalu score test. And what we can see here, the green line is LFP and the blue is not LFP. So the blue includes the non-LFP standard ranges, so pre-2021 standard ranges, and also the long ranges and performances. So uh, it's a real mixture there for that. But the green, it looks like, although you can see here, I was seeing some cars that are already reporting kind of 90%. Um, and there's one here reporting kind of 87% at 30,000, 40,000 miles. I thought, crikey, that's quite low. The long range is always more than that. But actually, what I think we're starting to see here is that they may have an initial drop, but then it does look like they are remaining more steady. So perhaps when they get to 150,000 miles, 200,000 miles, maybe they would still be holding in excess of kind of 80 or 85 percent, whereas the non-LFP maybe have come down a bit more from there. Time will tell. Like I say, there's work in progress, this spreadsheet, so this will build up. Um, but it was interesting because I say, I, I've even seen other tests, I think Bjorn did one with um, an LFP and kind of was like, wow, that's kind of a, quite a degradation on that, which wasn't really expected. Um, so in, here, in, in this sense, it doesn't seem to make too much difference, but maybe their ultimate long-term uh, retention of capacity will be good. Uh, so there we have it so far. Um, let's do a back to our comparison sheet here. And we can see though, if I, I, I kind of like this one here, which goes to show actually, you see how you get that initial drop in capacity and then it steadies out. And that's what we're going to expect. And it'd be good when we start seeing the cars at 150, 200,000 miles, 250,000 miles, 300,000 miles, and gather up some more of this data. But ultimately, from experience, I mean, look, batteries, they last really well. You less, yes, you can lose a bit of its original capacity, but it still works just as well. And, you know, if a car goes 10 or 20 miles less than it did when it was new, 30 miles less maybe, does it, how much does it really matter? You know, uh, it becomes a much cheaper car. The longevity is great. There are battery warranties, extended warranties available from companies now uh, as well for people that are considering a higher mileage car but concerned about battery health. So, and there's just used batteries available on the shelves at car breakers and such like as well from accident damaged cars. So... I think ultimately, yes, there's going to be a capacity loss, but it's all looking quite consistent, really, across different manufacturers, brands and mileages. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing some fairly consistent results and so nothing too dramatic like one manufacturer's right, you know, lost 50% of capacity after 50,000 miles. Nothing like that at all so far that I've seen. So, um, like I say, work in progress. But that's what we've got so far when it comes to looking at battery uh, health and uh, longevity and uh, how much degradation they get. So I hope that's useful for now. We'll keep the data coming. It takes a while to keep putting the data into a spreadsheet, but we'll keep doing so. So make sure to stay subscribed if you want to see some more.